0317 e <coughs> the bridge between the seven church ages and the seven seals jeffersonville indiana usa good evening friends it's a great privilege to be back in the house of the lord tonight in the service and still on the manna from this morning that our souls are so greatly blessed by his great presence and now tonight we are have uh, starting on the subject of the bridge between the seven church ages and the seven seals and i was just speaking this afternoon to a friend and maybe the lord willing sometime this summer if he doesn't take me home or i get to come back don't go overseas or nothing i would like to strike again at the seven last trumpets sing and it all bridges together and then there's the seven last plagues in this and it all blends right together as we'll see as we go along so tonight while we are kind of getting quieted i may be just a little lengthy tonight with even as soon as i get back here now all the preaching i done in phoenix i never one time even got hoarse see that's right and oh my how hard i preached and for i believe it was 27 services without getting a horse but it's the climate here you see just simply it's just bad right here just a valley it's just a bad condition back here and of course healthy you know what i mean it's a bad and any preacher has a that speaks as a bad throat to begin with a doctor friend of mine looked into my throat one time to see what was wrong said nothing said you just got calluses on your vocal cords there said that's from preaching well i kind of like that you know that made me feel better as long as it, it could be applied to preaching you see it will be all right for the kingdom of god now we might not be able to bear in our body the mark of jesus christ like paul did from being beat but we might bear our mark from preaching and giving our voice against the things that's wrong so we are thankful that we don't have to be beat anymore especially up in this time so we are how many in here has read what time is it sirs or had it you know what time is it sirs that's bothered me quite a bit if you haven't i wish some way if you could get to hear it or some way kind of bothered me i just wanted to drop this before starting the service about a week or 10 days ago i was so disturbed i just didn't i wouldn't take a services or anything because i didn't know it it seemed like it could be something that was bad and i didn't know just what it was so i one early morning i got up to go up into sabinia canyon with uh which from the house is about 30 minutes drive to the 40 to the head of the sabinia canyon and there a road that runs 30 miles up into the mountain a strange country up there i could be here on the desert where it's 80 and 90 right now and in 30 minutes be in eight foot of snow see on top of the mountain we was at phoenix just recently where it was 20 something 28 degrees they had the swimming pool heated and people were swimming and about 40 minutes drive from there it was 40 below zero at flagstaff see that's the difference from the up currents and the desert and are very healthy for asthmatics and so forth but i now i went up in the canyon and i climbed my way as high as i could go and i asked the lord while sitting up in there what all this meant and so forth i was kind of bothered and didn't know just what to do and so while i was praying a strange thing happened i want to be honest now i could have fallen asleep it could have been like a trance or it could have been a vision i'm more or less inclined to believe that it was a vision that i had my hands out saying lord what does this blast mean and what does these seven angels in a constellation of the pyramid picking me up from off the ground and turning eastward what does it mean i was standing there in prayer and something happened and now something fell in my hand and i know if you don't understand spiritual things it may seem very strange but something struck in my hand and when i looked it was a sword and the handle was made of pearl the prettiest pearl i ever seen and the guard you know where i guess to keep your hands from being lanced you know while you the people was, were dueling was gold and the saber blade wasn't too long but it was just a razor sharp and it was glistening silver and it was the prettiest thing i ever seen it just fit my hand exactly and i was holding it and i said isn't this pretty i looked at it and i thought but you always afraid of a sword i was kind of glad i lived out of the days that they used to have them because i'm afraid of a knife and so i thought what would i do with that 
And while holding in my hand a voice from somewhere said that this is the king's word, and then it left me. Well, I wondered what it meant, that is the king's word. And I thought if it would have said a king's word, it might have been that I would have understood it, but it said the king's word. So I may not have this right, but I thought there's only one, the king, that's God, and his sword is this, sharper than a two-edged sword, see? And ye abide in me and my word, see? And I thought in dueling, you see, and I was under, I don't underst uh, understand one word of it, but or the principle of dueling, but the best of my understanding, the knife striking across, and then finally the sword, if they lock the enemy and you lock the swords like this, then it takes the strength of the man dueling. Because, see, his sword will be pointed to my heart and mine to his. But they locked as our knives strike in each other, and then they strike, and then the swords come together. And the one that can shove the other one down, the sword is straight to the heart. So it takes, even though the sword be the word, it takes a hand of strong fist to hold it there, to bring it to the heart of the enemy. Now, not knowing these things, but just all that I have received of him that I can tell, I have told you. So that you know, I believe it was, wasn't it our Lord said all that he had received of the Father, that he had told and it held nothing. And so we want to do those things just as they come. Now, if you'll be real wise and pray, I'm sure you'll understand something pretty soon. Now, something that I hope is revealed. Now, in the this book, let's turn over to the fifth chapter of the book of, it's called The Revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, tomorrow night is the first seal which the first four seals are opened by the four horse riders, one on each seal that strikes the earth, and then perhaps they will not be long until, after we pass Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, about Thursday, then I suppose on the sixth and fifth, sixth and seventh seal will probably be very lengthy. So maybe it will give you a little time to catch up, a little rest. We aim to start the services here, I believe at seven in the weeknights, and I'm to be told on the platform at 7.30 exactly, and then that might let us out by midnight. So uh, I went an hour over this morning. I didn't mean that. I just um, know when, because I do not know what the first rider is. I do not know second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh seal. I, to this moment, I do not know. See, I'm just depending on him. So that's why trying this week by the grace of God to help, believing that if you understand it deeply, you know, in visions, you cannot reveal things until you're permitted to reveal. How many times have you all heard me say, go into a house, perhaps a heart be laying there here, and this certain child or so forth will not be healed until that is laid over here. I cannot tell them, or neither can I move it there. It's got to be moved in some other way. Somebody else has to take it and move it and everything in order. Then it can be revealed. So now... Be in prayer. Now, just before we approach the book, let's talk to him with our heads bowed. Lord Jesus, we are altogether insufficient. We will not try by no means to approach this sacred book in this most holy hour with souls hung in the definition of time without asking, Lord, that the only one that can reveal this book, that he come forward now, blessing the feeble efforts of the servant, bless the word as it goes forth, may it go in the power of the Spirit and may the spiritual ground of those who are hungering and thirsting to know righteousness and to know the will of God, may it fall in there and bring forth of its kind. Grant it, Lord, all praise shall be thine. May the hungry and go and the thirsty find food and drink tonight from the word. We ask it in Jesus' name, of whom the revelation is of. Amen. Now, we are going to turn to the fifth chapter. Now, this is not the seven seals. It's a bridge between the church ages and the seven seals. Now, there is also a sixth chapter of and there was the fourth chapter, rather, of Revelation. And in that, it kind of reveals something that will take place after the church going up. That the church goes up on the third chapter of Revelation. And it does not return until the 19th chapter of Revelation. See, therefore, the church misses the tribulation. I know that contrary to pretty near every teacher I ever talked to. But I don't mean to be disagreeable. I mean to be your brother. But I must teach just as I can see it. If I don't, I can't pull it together, you see. And now, whether it goes up before the tribulation or after the tribulation, I want to go up with it. That's the main thing. So those things we just uh, are presuming because without education, I type, I look and see what is or what 
has been in the Old Testament, which is a type or shadow of the new. And then I have some idea what the new is. See, like if Noah went into the ark before the tribulation set in a type. But even before Noah, see, went in the ark, Enoch went up, see, before anything happened. And Lot was called out of Sodom before one speck of tribulation set in of the destruction. But Abraham was all the time out of it. See, types. But now we will read the first verse. I'll read the first two or three verses of it. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat upon a throne a book written within, and on the back side filled with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, neither in earth, neither under the earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look upon it. What a book! And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Now you speak about unworthiness, not even worthy to look at it. No man nowhere. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. We will pause there for a few moments from the reading of Revelation 5 down to the including the seventh verse. This seven seal book is revealed at the time of the seventh hand of the Revelation, Revelation 10. Now, if you are marking it down, let's turn to Revelation 10. Just a moment, so you'll get an understanding before we get into it now. This is at the end time. For, for listen, I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow upon his head. If you notice, that's Christ, see, because he in the Old Testament was called the angel of the covenant. And he's directly coming to the Jews now, for the church is finished, see, all right. And his face as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And you remember that angel in Revelation 1, same angel, same thing, angel is a messenger, and he is the messenger to Israel, see, the church has been raptured, see, now, or fixing to be raptured, he comes for his church in a watch, and he had in his hand a little book open. Now, here it was closed, here and sealed, and here it's open. It's been opened since that time of the sealing. We are getting to tonight, now the book is open. A little book in his hand is was open. Oh, how the sun has pillars. Wait just a minute. Let me start back here and read and he had in his hand a little book open and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth and he cried with a loud voice as in a lion roar we know he is the lion of the tribe of judah over here he's the lamb but here he's a lion see and when he had cried seven thunders uttered their voices now john was commissioned to write what he saw so the apostle and prophet picked up his pen to write it and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices I was about to write, and I had a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. Now, that's what we don't know. That's yet to be revealed. It's not in the Holy Spirit. What them thunders say. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hands to heaven. Now listen, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created the heavens and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things therein are, that and there should be time no longer. Watch. Here's a verse I want to get to. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he has declared to his servants the prophets. Now see, the mystery of the seventh seal book will be revealed at the sounding of the seventh church angel's message. See, the seventh angel begins to sound, and there is the messages wrote out there, and we got it in tape and book form now. At the beginning of the sounding of the message, the mystery of God should be finished. See, at that time. Now, we will notice the book of the mystery of God is not revealed until the seventh angel's message is sounded. Now, these points will be important in the seals, I'm sure, because it must every bit tie together. Now, it's wrote mysteriously because no man nowhere knows it. God alone, Jesus Christ, see, now, but is, it is a book, a mysterious book, but it's a book of redemption. We'll get into that in a little while. And now we know that this book of redemption will not be thoroughly understood. It's be, uh, probed at through six church ages. But at the end, when the seventh angel begins to sound his mystery, he winds up all of those loose ends 
that these fellows probe that and the mysteries comes down from God as the word of God and reveals the entire revelation of God. And then the Godhead and everything else is settled. All the mysterious serpent seed and whatever more is to be revealed. Now, you see, I'm just not making that up. And that's what it thus says the Lord. I'll read it to you out of the book. The sounding of the seventh angel's message, the mystery of God should be finished. That's been declared by his holy prophets. That's the prophet who has wrote the word at the sounding of the seventh church age, the last church age, all the loose ends that through these church ages has been probed at will be wound up together. And when the seals are broke and the mystery is revealed, down comes the angel, the messenger Christ, setting his foot upon the land and upon the sea with a rainbow over his head. Now, remember, this seventh angel is on earth at the time of his coming. Just as John was giving his message the same time that Messiah came in the days, John knew he would see him because he was going to introduce him. And we realize that in the scriptures over in Malachi 4, there is to be one like John and Elijah to whom the word of God can come to. And he is to reveal by the Holy Spirit all the mysteries of God and restore the faith of the children back to the faith of the apostolic fathers, restore back all these mysteries that's been probed at through these denominational years. Now, that's what the word said. I'm just responsible for what it said. See, it's written, it's right. That's what it is. Now, we see that this seven seal book now is a mystery of redemption. It is a book of redemption from God. Now, all the mysteries at this time should be finished at the sounding of this messenger. Now, here is the angel on earth and another angel, mighty messenger, come down, see, this angel was an earthly angel, messenger, but here comes one down from heaven, a rainbow. Covenant, see, only Christ it could be. Just exactly like it was in Revelation 1, first chapter, standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks with a rainbow to look upon as Jasper and Sardius stone. And here he returns back in the tenth chapter after the coming time that all the mysteries is to be finished and the seals are to be broke and proclaiming that it's time no more. And he said, when the seventh angel has begun to sound, then the mystery should be finished. And time for the angel to appear, we are close somewhere, right? Now notice, the seven seals hold the mystery of the book. Until we can see those seven seals has sealed in, we are only presuming them things. Because, as I've told you this morning, upon my little message this morning, of God hiding in simplicity, you see, we are sure to miss the thing unless it is absolutely generally revealed by the Holy Spirit and vindicated the same. See, if the prophet rises and tells you that this is just that and God don't vindicate the same, forget it, see, but God in every statement, in everything, has to vindicate it to make it right, see, so his children will watch those things, see, and be alert. Notice seven seals on the book has the seven, these seven seals has the book sealed, see? The book is absolutely sealed. Do you see it? The book is absolutely a sealed book until the seven seals is broken. It is sealed up with seven seals now, and that's a different from the seven thunders, see? This is seven seals on the book, and the book will not, the seals will not be released until the message of the seventh angel, see? So we are presuming, but the general revelation of God will be made perfect in that sounding, vindicated truth. Now, that's exactly what the word says. The mystery should be finished at that time. And this seventh seal book, remember, it was closed here in Revelation, the sixth chapter. And in Revelation, the tenth chapter, it is opened. And now we're going to see what the book says about how it became open, become open, and is not made known until the Lamb takes the book and breaks the seals and opens the book. See, the Lamb has got to take the book. It's hid. Now remember, no man in heaven, no man in earth, Pope, Bishop, Cardinal, State Prebester, or whoever he is, can break them seals or reveal the book, but the Lamb, and we have probed and presumed and stumbled and wondered, and that's the reason we are all in such a confusion. But with the divine promise that this book of redemption will be perfectly opened by the Lamb, and the seals thereof will be loosed by the Lamb in the last days in which we are living now, and is not made known until the Lamb takes the book and breaks the seals, because remember, the book was being holded in the hands of him 
that sat upon the throne, and the Lamb comes to him that sits upon the throne, and makes the book, takes the book out of the, his right hand, takes the book, oh, that's deep, we'll try to solve it out if we can by the help of the Holy Spirit. Now we are depending on him, and we will later, we'll see later, it is at the end time, when time has run out. No denominations has a right for interpretation of the book. No man has a right to interpret it. It is the Lamb who interprets it, and the Lamb is the one who speaks it, and the Lamb makes the word to be known by vindicating and bringing the word to life. See, exactly notice, and is not revealed until this book is not revealed until the church ages and denominational ages has run out and there is time no more. See it? It's only revealed after church ages and denominational ages has run out. That's the reason the thing is in such a scruple tonight. See, they pick up a little doctrine and they run off here to one side and say, this is it. Another one picks up another doctrine, runs off this side and say, this is it. And each one builds a denomination under it until we got hundreds of denominations, but still in all of it to see the confusion. The people are wondering, what is truth? If that isn't just a condition today, but he promises that when that time has finished out, there will be the sounding of the seventh angel's voice, and then the book will be revealed, see, at that time. Now, don't say nobody, them people ain't saved back there, but the mysteries that they couldn't understand, how that God can be three and yet one, how that the scripture can say, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and turn around and say, baptize in the name of Jesus, see, oh, so many things. How can Eve eat an apple and cause the wreckage of the whole world, see, how can these things be? But those mysteries are promised to be revealed in the end time. It's little loose ends that these great warriors has come on the scene, such as Arrhenius and Martin, St. Martin and Polycarp, and the different ones, and Luther and Wesley and all of these, see, and as how they have come and just lived long enough to kind of bring a light and shine it. But they left many things in darkness. Along come the Pentecostal age, like the Lutheran age, and they ran out on limbs, but still, all right, don't say they wasn't right. They were, but there is loose ends left. That can't be explained. But in this, why the seals hasn't been broke to thoroughly reveal what these things are, see? But then, in the last age, all these mysteries are to be solved and handed out, and the seals are to be opened by the Lamb and revealed to the church, and then time is no more, see? How wonderful the book then is a book of redemption for then it goes ahead and will bring in later how on how the hundred and forty four thousand is brought in and so forth all right that's you now paul let's read a little bit i get some of these scriptures and i think we ought to read them now let's all of us turn paul in ephesians 1 many of them i see are writing they got their books and writing their scriptures down marking them in their bible for a chain so that's fine I like for you to do that, and then go home and study it. See, if you study it yourself, then you'll understand it better, see? Just study it, and just God to help you understand. Now, let's read a scripture. I've got it written down here, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. Now, in whom we also trusted after that ye had the word of truth and the gospel of your salvation, in whom, after ye have ye believed, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the party's possession and to the praise of his glory. See, now while we got the scriptures open, let us see the Holy Spirit here itself is a seal. The Holy Spirit is a seal, and a seal signifies what a finished work. The Holy Spirit being a seal to the individual, and to that individual when he receives the Holy Spirit, then his time of groaning is over. See, because it is a finished work. Like I used to work for the railroad company and we'd load box cars with cans and different things from the canning factory. And but then before that car could be sealed, the inspector came around to see if that car was properly loaded. If not, Brother Branham claps his hands together with something, it'll scatter the stuff and break it, and the railroad company was responsible. And that inspector would test everything to see if it was properly in place. If it wasn't, he condemned the car and then we had to do it all over again until the inspector was satisfied. And then when the inspector is satisfied, he shuts the door. The inspector shuts the door and the inspector places a seal upon it. And then no one can break this seal until it reaches its final destination. 
that's what the Holy Spirit has been doing, seeing. He goes and he inspects. That's the reason you can't have these things and you say, I spoke in tongues and I shouted and I danced in the Spirit. That don't have nothing to do with it. See, the Holy Spirit inspects that person until he's thoroughly satisfied and knows that they are. Then they are sealed unto the internal destination. There is not nothing can ever break that seal. The Bible, we're putting a scripture down, Ephesians 4.30 said, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, why by ye are sealed until the day of the redemption. Hold that word redemption, see, until the day that the book of redemption has been revealed and the Redeemer comes to claim his possession, nothing can do it, see. Don't grieve it. Stay, do things that pleases God, for the book is sealed now, and you are sealed. The Holy Spirit itself is a seal. Seal signifies, now, this is words I got from the dictionary. Seal signifies a finished work. And when the seventh seal is broken, the mystery of God that's sealed in these mysterious seals is finished until the day that seal is broke and then it's revealed what's on the inside of it. If the man is wondering what's in that box car, say, they're supposed to be such and such, they're supposed to be his presuming. But when the seal is broken and the door is open, we see into it then and see exactly what's in there. You see it? And that's only be done at the same time. Another thing a seal signifies is ownership. See, the seal has a mark of, on it, shows ownership. When you are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ and sealed by the Holy Ghost, you no longer belong to the world or anything pertaining to the world. You are owned by God. Another thing is a seal is a security. Seal means you are secured. Now, you don't have, don't believe in eternal security. I don't know. See, but now, but a seal signifies security to its destination. Woe unto that guy that will try to break that seal, and the Holy Spirit seal cannot be broken. You all have heard me say that people said the devil made me do this. No, the devil didn't do it. You just wasn't sealed in. Because when you are sealed in, he is sealed out. Yeah, see? Now you went out to him. Uh -huh. He couldn't get into you because the only way to get into you is come through the same process that you have. He would have to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Then he'd be your brother. So you see, so he didn't do it. No, no. You just went to the borderline and come back, lasting for the things of the world. You never went all the way over into Canaan. You see, across Jordan, the death to self, see? Now, notice, now this book is sealed, and you are sealed with the book until the day of redemption, again in Romans 8, 22 and 23. Let's get that and we'll give this background. Then I think we'll understand a little better if each person reads it for themselves. I'm giving you a few scriptures here. So we can we can look upon them and while the hour is still young, now 8, Romans 8, 22 to begin. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wait the redemption of the, our body. Oh my, oh my, don't that make us old folks feel good? It ought to make us all feel good, waiting for this hour. We understand this will take place at the first resurrection, see? Nature is groaning, we are groaning, everything is groaning because we realize there's something not right. And the only way you can groan and wait for it is because there has been new life coming here that speaks of a new world. Like the wife here, not long ago, we went over here to the supermarket and I said we found a strange thing. A lady had on a dress and it was so strange, see. They, they are nearly all of them don't wear dresses, you see. And somehow they are forgetful. They go out without them. So then they are willfully forgetful. And so then Mida said to me, she said, Bill, why is that? She said, oh, I said, it's just the spirit of the nation. And I said, when you go to Germany, you have a certain spirit. Go to Finland, you have a national spirit. You come to America, we have a national spirit. Our national spirit is frolic, jokes. You know why? We were founded upon the doctrine of the apostles. We were founding upon the leadership of great men, like Washington, Lincoln. But we have moved off of that foundation and we know that we've got it coming we know that at atomic bomb has got our name wrote on it 
We know that slavery lays ahead of us, knowing the fullness yourself. It reminds me, like some of these comedians going down and telling these jokes and carrying on and women carrying on the way they do and men together, it just reminds me of a little boy going through the graveyard whistling, trying to make himself believe he's not scared. Sure, he's scared, see? He ain't fooling nobody. That's why he's whistling, see? He's trying to say he's not scared, but he is. And that's what's the matter today. But oh, what a blessed hope for the believer that's lifting up hands for our redemption is drawing nigh. When he sees these things happening, it's a great time for the believer. Now, these things that the groaning in our bodies, did you ever notice a tree? How it struggles for life, it wants to live. And do you notice an animal, how in death it struggles? You notice a human being, everything, nature is groaning. We in ourselves are groaning, see? We know there's something wrong. We see from these verses that something has been lost, both to man and us. Creation of all type has lost something, for we see from this inspired word that it's groaning for some reason. You don't groan unless there's a reason to it. As I spoke of the ink, it's a reason. That's the way in praying for the sick until you can find the cause. I know the cure, but I've got to find the cause. That's why the visions are so needed. And prominent, it reveals the secret of the heart, tells the person where you made your mistake and what to do. See, no matter how much medicine you take or how much oil you pour on their heads or how loud anyone would scream over you, if there is something wrong, he lay right there. I said, he's th that's it. See, today, as advanced as we are in medicine, we still don't know nothing about these things. You say he's got cancer. Well, that ain't nothing. That's just the names what it is. The names, the medical name, cancer, that don't have anything to do with what it is. That's the name that we call it. We just call it by the name cancer. But really, what it is, break it down, is a devil. Now, we say sin. We just call it sin. Break it down. What is sin? A lot of people say drinking, committing adultery. No, no. That's the attributes of sin, see? That's what sin causes, see? But real sin is unbelief. That's where it's that's where it's named and called out. If you are a believer, you don't do those things. But no matter how holy you try to make yourself and how religious you try to be, if you do those things, you are an unbeliever. That's scriptural. Now, something is lost and it's groaning. It's trying to get back, to be back to its original condition. Would you imagine someone falling from the earth down into a deep pit somewhere and was struggling climbing, pulling, they must, by some means, get out of this pit. They are not in their original state, and they are frantically, they are screaming. They are clawing the walls, making a noise, or doing some way. They are groaning because that they want to get to their original state. That's why a person that struck with disease, aches, and pains, one time, they wasn't that way, but they are groaning. Why? They are not right. There is something wrong. And they're groaning and trying to get back to where they was when they had health. And when nature and people, as the Bible said, are groaning, it shows there's something that they didn't in their ought-to-be condition. They have fallen from somewhere. Now, we don't need anybody to interpret that for us. See, for of course, we know it was eternal life. They had fallen from, and they lost their claims on eternal life by the fall of Adam and Eve who fell from eternal life to death in the Garden of Eden, and brought all nature under them to death. A, true, a tree never died before Adam, an animal wouldn't die before Adam, and there's only one thing that cannot die, and that's God, because he's eternal. And that's the only way we can ever keep from dying. We have to have eternal life in us to be sons and daughters of God. But when we died, as I said in the message this morning to sin, we sold out our birthright and crossed this chasm. Now we are beyond the reach of God on this other side of the chasm. Now, of course, when Adam fell to death, he brought death upon all creation. Now, he was given free moral agency. It was given to them just as we so to make a choice. Now, Adam and Eve, in the beginning, there was a tree of right and wrong before them. And that same tree sets before each and every one of us. See, God isn't doing for Adam and for Eve, you say, well, it's their fault. No, no. Not now it isn't. It's your fault. You can't place it on Adam now. You've got to place it on yourself because right and wrong is set before you. We are on the same basis as, as Adam and Eve. 
but you see when we are redeemed we no more want our own choice but we want his choice see see now adam and eve wanted their own choice they wanted to they wanted to find out what it was to have wisdom so they probed into it and it caused death now when a man has been redeemed he don't care anymore for scholarship he don't care for any more of the things of the world the wisdom of the world he don't want no choice at all christ has been his choice and that's all of it he is redeemed he just no more wants to lead himself he don't want nobody to talk him into where to go and what to do he just waits and finds out the choice of his maker see then he goes in the name of his maker when the maker tells him to go see but the man seeking wisdom wants to find well this parish is pretty good but they pay me more over yonder so i'll go over there see wisdom now when adam sinned by heeding his wife's reasoning instead of holding to god's word that's what made adam sin his wife reasoned with satan and then produced a product to adam and adam turned loose and the word and sold out he lost also his inheritance when he lost his fellowship and right to life remember the day you eat thereof that day you die and when he lost his life he also lost his inheritance in life because he had completely supreme control of the earth he was a god of the earth god is the god of the universe everywhere but his son had this earth under his own control he could speak he could name he could say he could stop nature he could do anything he wanted to see but when he did that he lost his inheritance now adam could say let this mountain here be moved over there and it would do it adam could say let this tree here be plucked up and planted over there it would do it see for he had complete supreme control as a minor god and a god our father because he was a son of god now couldn't we stop here just a minute and get a real sermon see oh then if the blood has cleansed it back what about now see look what that son of god the second adam did see and said the works that i do shall you also see adam lost his inheritance the earth now it passed from his hand to the one he sold out to satan he sold his faith in god to satan's reasoning therefore his eternal life his right to the tree of life his right to the earth belonged to him and he forfeited every bit to the hands of satan he passed it from his hand to satan therefore now it has been it returned and has been polluted and the seed of adam has destroyed the inheritance that adam should have had that's the earth that's right see the seed of adam i stopped the other day at down at tucson where i live and i was talking to someone up on top of the mountain looking down i said what do you think that 300 years ago the old papa go come down through there on his travels with squaw his squaw and children sitting on the back rode out from somewhere and lived peacefully there was no adultery no whiskey no gambling no nothing among them they lived clean and the coyote come down they washed each night through tucson here howling and the mosquitoes and cactus bloomed around on the banks and jehovah looked upon it and must have smiled but the white man come that way and what has he done he has dug up the cactus he has polluted the country with beer cans and whiskey bottles he has ruined the morals of the nation the only way he could whip the indian was to kill out his food and the buffalo when i was reading a tombstone the other day in the museum and you saw the pictures of geronimo and many of you might think that geronimo was a renegade to me he was a genuine american he only fighting for what that which was right that god had given him a land and a nation and a place to live i don't blame him and when those white soldiers come in there and by force taking over the land and killing them out like a bunch of flies and there was the original picture of geronimo's medical headquarters or his hospital it was two or three blankets over a piece of mosquito and them wounded real genuine americans indians fighting for their god-given rights and there geronimo with a baby of his own on the hips standing there looking upon his own warriors bleeding dying with no penicillin or nothing no way to help them genuine god-given americans then call him a renegade i call him a gentleman coaches would have never surrendered he was an old man but the american army 
them all dressed in there and they went out there and would kill the buffalo. They ran excursions out and Sharp invented the buffalo rifle and they went out there and say, oh, I had a good day today shooting off the side of a boxcar or a passenger car. Say I killed 40 today, 40 buffaloes, which would have kept the whole tribe of Indians two years or more. What did they do with them? Let them lay on the desert. Their old carrion bloated the lands and stank lands. The coyote eat. When the Indian killed the buffalo, there was a religious ceremony. He took his hoofs, sawed them to make pans. He, his meat they eat, even to the meat on the entrail. They taken all of his meat and hung it up and dried it. His hide was dried and they made clothing and tents. There wasn't nothing. But when the white man come in, the renegade is the white man. He is the rascal. And he come in and killed off those buffaloes and starved those Indians out. Any genuine man would fight for his God-given rights. It's a stain on the American flag. What they did to the American Indian, after all, it belonged to him. What would you think if Japan or some Russia would come here and in and say, get out of here, get out of here, and do us and our children the way we did those Indians? But remember, we have sold, and now we are going to reap. That's the law of God, you know. There's a planting time and then a harvest time. I think that is too bad. Yes, sir. Now what happened? The polluted seed of Adam has polluted and absolutely destroyed the land. Do you know the Bible says that? And because that he has did this, the polluted seed of Adam, God will destroy them. You want to read that? Let's see. It's wrote down here. Turn to Revelation, the 11th chapter. And we'll find out, get over in Revelation, the 11th chapter, and we'll see what God said about them, who is destroying the earth. The 11th chapter, and let's take the 18th verse, I believe it is, 11, 18, and here we are, and the nations were angry, and their wrath is come. Now watch, God's wrath, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shalt give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, both small and great, and shall destroy them which destroy the earth. What they are going to do? Reap what they sowed. Sure, when you see sin running in the streets, how many on this Sunday night, how many adulteries will be committed in that city tonight? How many women will break a marriage vow in this little hole in the ground here called Jeffersonville? How many abortion cases you think are recorded in Chicago in 30 days, in between 25 and 30,000 per month, besides the ones that's not turned in? How much whiskey is drunk in the city of Chicago? What do you think happens in Los Angeles in one night? How many times has the Lord's name been taken in vain in the city of Jeffersonville today? It is better now, or it, was it better when George Rogers Clark came down on the raft? You see, we have absolutely polluted the earth with our filth, and God will destroy those that destroy the world. God said so. I always thought there was something down in me, like to get up in the mountains and look the way God fixed it. I hate Florida, where they got them artificial palm trees, and oh my... I'd rather see the crocodiles twitching his tail back in the wilderness than to see all that they are put on and stuff that they do in Hollywood and all that, this glamour and bunch of drunks. And oh my, I just think someday, someday, yeah. But remember, the Bible has told us in Matthew the fifth chapter that the meek shall inherit the earth. That's right, the meek and the humble will inherit the earth. Jesus said, blessed are the meek, the simple ones, that just don't try to be some great big something they shall inherit the earth jesus said so yes now they polluted it and god will destroy them but the meek will inherit the earth after it's been purified now oh my now the forfeited title deed is now in the hands of the original owner almighty god the title deed to the earth and to eternal life when adam forfeited it then satan's dirty hands could not take it so it went back to its original owner, God himself. We are going to find it just in a minute there. He sits on the throne with it in his hand. The title deed. Oh, that makes me feel religious. The title deed to eternal life. Abstract title deed to eternal life. When Adam forfeited it for wisdom instead of faith, it went back to the hands of the owner, Almighty God. What a great thing. All right, waiting. What's it doing in the hands of God, waiting for redemption claims? He made a way of redemption. He made a way back, and someday the Redeemer is to take it back. You see where we are 
getting to Naum, will watch this fellow sitting upon the throne. All right. Waiting for redemption. Claims. It's redemption. What is the book of redemption? This title deed, abstract title deed, you say abstract. What does an abstract mean? It means it searched all the way back to its beginning. Like that little drop of ink this morning. When it struck that bleach, it went all the way back. And when sin has been confessed and fallen into the blood of Jesus Christ, oh my, it gives an abstract. Right straight back to the creator again. You become a son of God. Abstract deed. Abstract title deed is held in the hands of the Almighty. Oh my. Its redemption means all legal possession to all that was lost by Adam and Eve. Oh my. Father Abraham claps his hands together once. What? ought that to do to a born again christian it's legal possession to that abstract deed title deed of eternal life means that you possess everything that adam and eve lost who you what of it brother the possession of that deed adam could not meet the requirements of redemption after he found he lost it he had sinned and had separated himself from god was on this side of the chasm so he could not redeem it. He just couldn't do it because he needed redemption himself. And so he could not do it. But the law required a kinsman redeemer. The law of God required a kinsman redeemer. You want to mark that down, kinsman redeemer? Find it in Leviticus 25. We won't have uh, time to go thoroughly search this because we know each text would make a night fee. But God's law received a substitute. Now, what if God had not offered to take a substitute, but love constrained him to do it? That man was without a way back. There was no way back for him to get back. He was gone. But the grace of God met his kinsman redeemer in the person of Jesus Christ. Law required it. Grace met its requirements. Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. God's law required an innocent substitute. And who was innocent? Every man had been born sexual. After sex, everyone. And the only one that wasn't had forfeit the right to, to eternal life and to be king on the earth. Oh, when I think of that scripture, for thou hast redeemed us back to God, that we may reign and be kings and priests upon the earth. Oh my, what? The king's one redeemer. Oh, what a story we should have here. Notice, law required a king's one redeemer to redeem a lost substance. Grace met this requirement. In the person of Jesus Christ, a king's one redeemer must be born of the human race now how could we be when every man that's born has to and anybody that could have couldn't see it was a sex act there well he is totally blind because every man that was born was born of a woman and god required a kinsman redeemer and he must be a human oh my what are you going to do now law required a kinsman redeemer now he couldn't take an angel he had to take a man because we are not kin to an angel, we are kin to one another. The angel never fell. He's a different kind of a being. Got a different body. He never sinned or nothing. He's different. But the law required a kinsman redeemer. And every man on earth was born of a sex. Now, don't you see? There is where it comes from. That's where sin started. So you see where it's at now. There he comes. We are seed of the serpent in sin. Now, notice required a kinsman redeemer, and the redeemer, kinsman redeemer, must be born of the human race. Here, that leaves us on a limb. But let me sound the trumpet to you. The virgin birth produced the product. Amen. The virgin birth produced our kinsman redeemer, none other but the Almighty God, become Emmanuel, one of us. Emmanuel, the kinsman redeemer, was met. You see how God makes a requirement, and there is nothing we can do. But then grace steps in and overshadows that law and produces a product. Amen. Oh, when you get over home, when I get my little cabin down there, that Brother Neville sings about, when you all hear something down there, one morning sing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. You say, praise God, all Brother Branham made it. There he is. See, yes. Oh, it's grace that taught my heart to fear. It was grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Wait till we get down to it. Just in a moment. Oh my. Now look. The book. The book of Ruth gives a beautiful picture of this. How Boaz and Naomi had lost their estate. You know, 
you heard me preach on it, haven't you? Raise your hands up if you heard me preach it. So you understand, see, Boaz had to become a redeemer. And he was the only one that could. He had to be a kinsman, a near kinsman. And in redeeming Naomi, he got Ruth. That was Jesus Boaz type in Christ. And when he redeemed Israel, he got a gentle bride. So then you see, so very beautiful. We have it on teeth, I'm sure. Here somewhere, you'd like to have it. Now notice now, he must be kinsman. So you see, an angel couldn't do it. A man couldn't do it. It must be a man, but he can't be born of a woman as such. So the virgin birth, the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. Therefore, Jesus was not a Jew. Jesus was not a Gentile. Jesus was God. That's exactly. His blood doesn't come from any such He was a holy, created blood of God. And we're not saved by Jewish blood, neither are we saved by Gentile blood. We are saved by the blood of God. That's according to the Bible. It says so. We are saved by... So you see, Jesus was God. He was not no third person, fourth person, second person. He was a person. He was God, see? Was God, Emmanuel. God come down from his glory, revealed himself. I love that story of both Clebon, that great, beautiful hymn, down from his glory, a living story. My God and Savior came, and Jesus was his name, born in a manger to his own a stranger, a man of sorrows, tears, and agony. Oh, what condensation bringing us redemption, when in the dead of night not one faint hope in sight, God precious tender laid aside his splendors, stooping to woo and to save my soul. Oh, how I love him, how I adore him, my breath, my sunshine, my all in all. The great Redeemer became my Savior, the great Creator became my Savior, and all God's fullness dwelleth in him. Thus the one met the requirement. Grace produced the person of Jesus Christ. And we find this book now. God stretched his hand, come from God to become a man. He changed his strain from the Almighty to a man, to take on the form of man, so he could die to redeem man, wait till we see him, when there is nobody worthy. See? All right. In the Bible, in the days, in the book of Ruth, as we read it, we'll find out such a person was called the Goel. G-O-E-L. Was called the Goel. Or, it was a person that could meet the requirements. And the Goel must be able to do it. Must be willing to do it. And must be a kinsman. Next to kinsman to do it. And God the creator of spirit became king folks to us. When he became man, in order that he could take our sin upon him and pay the price and redeem us back to God again, there it is, there is a redeemer. Christ has redeemed us now. We are now redeemed, but he has not claimed his possession yet. Now, you might differ with that. But just hold on a minute, see? We'll see. He hasn't claimed it, see? If he took the book of redemption, everything that Adam had and everything that he lost, Christ redeems back and he has already redeemed us but he hasn't took the possession yet. He cannot until the time appointed. And then will come the resurrection. And then the earth will be renewed again. And then will take possession, his possession, which he got when he redeemed us. But will do it at the appointed time. Oh my, this is described in this seven seal book that we're talking of now. All right, the book of redemption, it's all described in here. All that what Christ will do at the end will be revealed to us this week in the seven seals if God will let us see. All right. It will be revealed and revealed as the seals break and are released to us. Then we can see what this great plan of redemption is and when and how it's going to be done. It's all hidden in this book of mystery here. It's sealed. God up with seven seals and so the lamb is the only one who can break them. Now, pardon me, we realize now, if you would like to look at the scriptures, you can get over in Jeremiah and find out there, when he was going to, into the captivity of the land, you know, he bought his uncle, his uncle's son had some property, and he went through that ceiling. And if we took it all, we got that also in the seven church ages, them, seals, and so forth in there. You see, a seal in the Old Testament was like a roll, like this. But the Branham uses sheets of paper to illustrate the rolling, sealing, and opening of a scroll. And here was a mystery. And this mystery was hidden, all right? It was sealed around and put here. They claimed to, to so-and-so. Then the next mystery was wrapped 
around what this inheritance was and stuck out here on this side and the clay to so and so and went on down until it made a scroll because people didn't have books like this then it was in a roll how many knows that called a scroll well a seal scroll you could break loose one here what the mystery of this was and tear it loose and you could see what that claim was but then break the other one loose and you could see what that claim was and the whole thing here is seven seals got the mysteries of god from the foundation of the world all sealed up in there there and revealed by seven different seals that if god willing let him let us pull back these seals and look down through the book and find out what it's all about see oh i hope we have a good time there's a mystery of redemption is sealed until this book will not be broken until the last angel's message the scroll is there we know it was there we know that it was redemption we believed it was redemption jeremiah said this scroll must be kept as you read it there he'll say he must be kept in an earthly vessel blessed oh what a beautiful thing there i could talk about a while this scroll was kept in an earthly vessel a vessel that once he became flesh glory died rose again and kept in an earthly vessel until the time of the purchase oh my beautiful you are right now these messages are all kept up until this earthly vessel until the time of god's appointed time at the last messengers at the earth and all that these people had judged at and said i know it's there i know it's there and they fought at it and brought it forth and produced the things but faith they believed it but now it's going to be brought to us in revelation and from the hand of god by vindication god said so he promised it now let's see where we was at let's go to verse 2 now that's a long time for verse 1 but uh, let's take it verse 2 now we probably won't stay that long on the next one and i saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and close the seals thereof now remember let's read the first verse again so we get it together i saw in the right hand of him that son upon the throne god who is that the absolutely original holder of the book of life he holds it god does when adam forfeited it went right back to its original owner it belongs to him and john in the vision looked over and saw in the right hand of him that sat upon the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals see inside now when we go to breaking these seals we are going to see it goes plumb back in the scripture all the way back for each one of those seals the whole thing together the whole mystery lays right here in these seals see every mystery of the bible lays in these seals and the seals cannot be broken until that time i prove it here just in a minute notice the book remember is sealed here is one here it is this seal then another one is wrapped a seal another one is wrapped a seal it's a book of redemption and the whole thing together makes the book and it seals the seven seals and then it's on the back side it's because it's wound up the seal mystery is on the inside and it only says the white horse rider or the black horse rider and what more on the outside but the mystery of the whole book is in them seals from genesis to revelation the complete plan of redemption is revealed in these seven seals oh it's an important time god help us to get it see now and a strong angel now verse 2 the strong angel with a loud voice proclaiming who is worthy worthy for what who is worthy to take that book now we find out where is the book at now to its original owner because it has been forfeited by a son the first son of god in a human race and when he forfeited his rights he listened to satan he gave up what did he do he accepted satan's wisdom instead of god's word now he couldn't we stop here a while sons of god will take a seminary idea about it instead of the word of god see same thing adam did forfeited his rights and when it did it went right straight back can't you see where those ages has been see went right straight back to the original holder and john in the spirit standing up here in heaven he is just been lifted up now from the church ages see saw the church ages and then he was taken up in the fourth chapter he said come up higher 
I'm going to show you things that will come. And he saw one sitting upon the throne with his hand in a book in his hand, in his right hand, think of it now. And then in this book was a title deed to redemption. And it was sealed with seven seals. And then an angel came forth, a strong angel, proclaiming with a loud voice, who was worthy to open the book, to take the book, who was able to open the seals, who was able to open this book. See, the angel asked it. John saw it, and he said, Now who is worthy? Let him, oh my, maybe I'm just feeling this away, but let him, said the angel, let him, here is the book of redemption, here is the plan of redemption, here is the only way you will ever be redeemed. For here is the title deed to redemption of the whole heavens and earth. Let him come forward if he will, oh my, now speak, or forever hold his peace. Let him come forward and claim this book, who is worthy to do it? And John said, There was no man in heaven found worthy, no man on earth found worthy, no man beneath the earth that ever lived and died was found worthy, no man was found worthy. And the angel's call was a call for the kinsman redeemer to appear. God said, I have a law, and the kinsman redeemer can be a substitute. Where is that kinsman redeemer? Who is able to take it? And it came from Adam, all the way down through all the apostles and prophets and everything else. And and nobody was found. Now, what about that? Nobody in heaven, nobody on earth, nobody that ever lived. Elijah was standing there, Moses was standing there, all the apostles were standing there, or all the ones that had died, all the holy men, Job, the sages, everyone was standing there, and nobody was worthy even to look at the book and let alone take it and break the seals. Now, where is the Pope and all these coming in at? Where is your bishop? Where is our worthiness? We are nothing, that's right. He asked for the king's redeemer to step forward if he could. But John said no man was worthy. Now that there wasn't worthy people there now, like an angel, like for instance, we would say Gabriel or Michael, but remember, it had to be a kinsman. Remember John said here, and no M-A-N, not angel, not seraphim, they hadn't sinned. But they were in a different category. They had never fallen. But these had to be a king and redeemer, no man, because there was no, none of them redeemed. No man was worthy to look at it. Oh no, my, my. So he took a human with kinsman and he asked for it and he wasn't found nowhere. There was nobody, no bishop, no archbishop, no priest, no hierarchy, no nothing was even, didn't have the holiness enough to even look at the book. Phew, my, my, that speech is strong. But that's what the Bible said. I'm just quoting what John said. The Bible said that John wept, not as some people have thought it. I was hearing a man teach this one time, said John wept because that he found himself not worthy. Oh, any man under the Holy Spirit would know different from that. See, under the inspiration of God would know different from that. But John wept. Here is what I think he wept for. Because if no one was worthy and could open this book of redemption, the whole creation was lost. Here is the book, here the title did, and it will be offered to the kings and redeemer that can meet their qualifications. That's God's one own law. And he can't defile his law. He can't defile his law. Rather, see, God required a kings and redeemer who was worthy, who was able to do it, who had the substance to do it. And the angel said, now let that kings and redeemer step forward. And John looked, and he looked all over the earth. He looked beneath the earth, and there was nobody their creation and everything was lost of course john wept everything was lost his crying didn't last but just a little though there then there stood one of the elders said don't trip john oh my his crying didn't last just a minute john thought oh my where is the man there stands the prophet they was born like i was there stands the sages there stands oh ain't nobody else here i see a man that's able to do it. I want a man that can redeem. And he wasn't found. So John broke out. Oh, everything was lost. And he wept bitterly. And he was sad because everything, the whole creation, everything was gone. If they couldn't find somebody, glory to God, if they couldn't find somebody that can meet the requirements, there, every human being in the whole world was, and creation was gone. Oh, everything had fallen. The rights of redemption, the right of eternal life, the light, all these rights had been forfeited and there was nobody who could pay the price. 
and John starts crying because no man was worthy and no one could even look at the book. Oh, it took a human being. John wept because no one could do it and everything was lost. And there came a voice from one of the elders standing in the midst of the four beasts and all that great host of heaven said, Don't weep, John. Oh, my grace of God. Don't be brokenhearted, John. Don't weep for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root and offspring of David. He has prevailed. Prevail means wrestle with and overcome. Oh, my, the garden of Gethsemane, when the blood dropped down out of his face, he was overcoming. See, whew, see, the lion and the root of David has prevailed, has overcome, like Jacob being supplanter. And when he got in contact with the angel, he held on. And the angel tried to pull away. He said, I'm not going to let you go. He held on until he got what he wanted for. And his name was changed from supplanter, which means deceiver, to what? To a prince with God, Israel. He prevailed. And this lion of the tribe of Judah prevailed. He said, don't weep, John, for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. He has already overcome. He has done it. It's over, John. Phew. Oh, my. He produced a bleach that sends sin along back to the greasy hands that, with his wisdom, that defiled it, the human being. Yes. But when John returned to look, he saw a lamb. What a difference from a lion. He said, the lion has prevailed. See, again, I can see that there. God hiding in simplicity. He said, there was a lion. That's the king of the beast. The lion has prevailed. There, the strongest thing there is, is a lion. I've laid out in the jungles in Africa, and here the giraffe squealing, and the great mighty elephant with his trunk in the air. Whee, whee, whee. And here the savages of the desert screaming out their bloody cradle cries and the beetles still and billy paul and i laying in a little old place covered over with stickers and here away off in the distance a lion roar and everything on the desert shuts up even the beetles stop following the king speaks oh my i tell you that's when denominations and doubts fall to the ground everything gets quiet when the king speaks and this is the king and that's his word oh he said john don't worry, don't cry, don't be broken up, John. I have you here in the vision. I'm showing you something, and I know you are all tore up because you know there's nothing to be redeemed. Everything is gone. There's nobody could meet the requirement. But the lion of the tribe of Judah, you know Judah, we had it on the blackboard here. You know, the tribe of Judah's emblem was a lion. Remember the lion and the ox and so forth, the head of the man and uh, so forth. And them watching those teraphims, that word, while all, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, all stood around the book of Acts. And I heard a man say, a great minister said, the book of Acts is just the scaffold work. It was the first vine that the church ever put forth. Aha, uh -huh, yes, sir. And she ever puts forth another one. It will be that kind too. Yes, sir. We've got some grafted vines and they're bearing lemons. It ought to be oranges but see when that vine that the vine ever puts forth its branch again it will just be exactly like the original and Matthew, Mark, Luke and John those gospels are standing there guarding that the wisdom of a man the power of a lion the work of an ox and the swiftness of the leopard or the eagle rather yes the gospel standing there what remember when he had it congregation says amen it's the seven church ages now he said the lamb of the train of tribe of judah why out of judah oh judah a lawgiver shall go shall not go before it between his knees until shallow comes but he'll come through judah and the lion the symbol of the tribe of judah has prevailed he has overcome and when he looked around to see where that lion was he saw a lamb strange look for a lion and see a lamb the elder called him a lion but when john looked he saw a lamb a lamb as it had been slain from the foundation of the world a lamb having been slain what was it what was that lamb it was bloody wounded a lamb that had been slain but was alive again and he was bloody oh my how can you look at that folks and remain a sinner a lamb stepped up the elder said a lion has overcome the lion of the tribe of judah and john looked to see the lion and there come a lamb shaking blood on him wounds he had prevailed you could tell he had been in battle. 
he had been slain, but he was alive again. John hadn't noticed this lamb before, you know. Here, it hadn't been mentioned before. Nowhere had it been mentioned. John didn't see it all over the heavens as he was looking, but here is come forth. Notice where it came uh, forth. Where did it come from? It came from the Father's throne, where he had been seated since he had been slain and raised again. He raised up and sat on the right hand of God, ever living to make intercessions. Amen. Raised up there today as an intercessor with his own blood to make intercession upon the ignorance of the people. Now that's the one I'm depending on. He still was covered with bleach, the bleach of the forgiveness of sin. John looked at that lamb, and the lamb looked like he had been slain. And then he noticed he was wounded and cut and bruised and bleeding. A bloody lamb, that's what took our place. Isn't it strange? A simple lamb had to take our place, and he saw the lamb. He proceeded out. John hadn't saw him because he had been way back into the eternities, ever making intercession and showing that those who had come to God as an offering of the blood of bulls of goats, a substitutionary offering, he also caused them who believed it pointed to him, and the blood had not been shed yet. So he was there to clear them. He was there to clear you and I. And oh God, I hope he is here, there tonight for every sinner, the lamb being slain. How can Jehovah see anything but that bloody lamb standing there? And the lamb proceeded out into the vision now, as it had been slain. Notice, come from the Father's throne. Oh, think he. Where did he advance from to, the, to this vision? He came from glory, where he is seated at the right hand of God. He advanced forth to John, out of glory. Oh, would not it be a glorious thing if our sinful thoughts tonight could be laid aside long enough to accept him? And he would advance all the way from glory tonight to make himself known to any of you. The Lamb advancing from glory for intercessions, all right, to make claims now for his redemption. Remember, he had been on his meditorial work back here. But remember, these seals are ready to be opened. And the Lamb come from the sanctuary of God, advanced forward. Wait till we get over there. That one hour, take that one half hour. It's been silent. The sanctuary is smoking. There is no more intercession. The sacrifice has left. It's a judgment seat. There is no blood on it no more. For the blood covered lamb has walked away. Don't you wait till that time. Remember in the Old Testament, as long as the blood was off the mercy seat, it was judgment. But as long as the blood was on there, there was mercy. But when the lamb walked away, that did it. What's he been he has been an intercessor. No other person, tell me where Mary could make intercessions then. What could Mary offer? What could St. Francis, St. Assisi, or any St. Cecilia, rather, or any other human being? John never saw a thousand saints come out from the meditorial. He saw a lamb, a lamb that had been slain, bloody. I don't care how many saints have been slain. They were all due it, every one of them, like the thief said at the cross, we have sinned, and we are due this. But this man has done nothing. Nothing. He was the only man that was worthy. Here he come from the intercessionary box. What's he coming for now? Watch him, oh my. John was weeping. Where is it all at? What's going to happen? Said, don't weep, John, said the elder. Here comes the lion. He was the one prevailed. When he looked, here come a lamb, bloody, that had been slain. Anything that's killed is bloody, you know. It's been killed. Its neck has been chopped open or something. The blood is all over it. Here comes a lamb, been slain, and he came forth, oh my, what? To make his claims on his redemption. Amen. Oh, don't you just feel like just going over in a corner, sit down and cry a while. Here, come a lamb, still bloody. John, there wasn't nothing there. All the celebrity was standing around, but there was none of them could do it. So here come the lamb now. His intercessory days is over. The meditorial days. That's when this angel is going to stand there. You will wait until we get in the seals 
and time shall be no more. That's right. That half hour of silence, what will take place in that half hour of silence? When that seventh seal next Sunday night, the Lord willing, he comes forth, what to take his claims? Oh, now, oh my, comes forth to take his claims. Now, he had done the king's man's work. He had come down, become man, died. He done the king's man's work of redemption, but had not as yet for called his claim. Now he comes on the scene to claim his rights. Watch what takes place, oh my, for which he was slain, for as becoming a kinsman to man, to die in his place, to redeem him. But the elder was right when he said he was a lion. See, the elder called him, said a lion, because he had been a, a lamb, an intercessor, a bloody lamb, but now he is coming forth as a lion. His days of intercession is over. Let him that's filthy be filthy still. Let him that's righteous be righteous still. Let him that's holy be holy still. The thing is closed, oh brother. Then what? Then what? And remember, it comes at the seventh church age, when the mysteries of God will be opened up. Now watch, we will close. This is something you must get. Now he had been doing his meritorious work, making intercessions for the believer. For 2,000 years he had been back there a lamb. Now he's stepping forth from eternity to take the title deed book and to break the seals and reveal the mysteries when of it at the end time. Now, do you get it? Congregation says amen. All right, we'll go on then. Now, break the seals and release all the mysteries to them, to the seventh angel whose message is to reveal all the mysteries of God. The mysteries of God lays in the seven seals, seeing that's what he said here. All the mysteries lays in the seven seals, and the Lamb comes forth now from being a mediator between God and man. He becomes a lion, and when he becomes a lion, he takes the book, takes his rights. God has held it, the mystery, but now the Lamb comes. Nobody could take the book, it's still in the hands of God. No Pope, priest, whatever might be, they can't take no. The book, the seven seals, hasn't been revealed, seeing. But when the mediator, when his work is done as in the intercessor, he comes forth. And John the elder said, he's a lion. And he comes forth, watch him, oh my, see, he comes forth to take the book now, watch, to reveal the mysteries of God that others has guessed at in all these denominational ages. See, when the seventh angel, if this book, mysteries is the word of God, the seventh angel has to be a prophet for the word of God to come true. No priest, pope, or anything else can get it. The word don't come to such. The word of God comes only to a prophet. Always Malachi 4 promised such. And when he come forth, he would take the mysteries of God where the church has got all scrappled up in all these denominations and restore the faith of the children back to the fathers. And then the world judgment would strike and the earth would be burnt. And then the righteous would walk out upon the ashes of the wicked in the millennium. Do you understand it now? Congregation says amen. All right. Others have had the guest at in the denominational age, but see, he must be this man. The seventh angel of Revelation 10, 1 to 4 is the seventh angel, has the mysteries of God given to him. He finishes all the mysteries that's been left off down through the denominational ages. Now, you can see why I do not strike at my brethren, in denomination, it's the system of denomination. They do not, there is no need of them trying to know it because it could not be revealed. That's according to the word. They presumed at it and believed it was there and by faith walked by it. But now it's evidently proved, amen. Oh my, what a scripture. Now watch. Then it is he, the lamb, that takes his kingly position when his saints come to crown him, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, seeing. See, time has run out. Revelation 10, 6. There is no more time. Notice, there is seven horns on this lamp. Did you notice it? Having seven horns, we've just been through that. Horns means power to the animal. And notice, he was not an animal because he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. See, notice, oh my, I believe I had that wrote down somewhere. Oh, to break the seals and to lose the title, the title did, and the message to the last angel, and he takes his kingly place 
that's what he comes forth now to do. Now watch when he comes out, the seven horns. Now when he saw this lamb, John, looking at it, it looked like he had been slain, bloody, and he has come from eternity and has ceased to be a mediator. Then pray to Mary as much as you want to. There was no man in heaven and in earth for no person, no being nowhere else, could take it. John even wept about it. Oh, Catholic friend, can't you see that? Don't pray to some dead person. The lamb is the only mediator, see? He was the one that came forth. And what did he do now? He's been back there interceding until his blood has atoned for every person and the lamb now knows what's written in the book. So he knowed from the foundation of the world their names were in there. So he had stood back here and but done mediator work like this until mediatory work, till everyone that's been put in the book has been redeemed and it's finished. And now he walks out, see? He done his kinsman work. He is all, you know what the kinsman work was? To testify before elders. You remember Boaz, king of his shoe and so forth. He has done all this now. Now he comes to take his bride, amen. He comes now as king. He is looking for his queen, amen. In this book is a whole secret of it wrapped up around seven seals, oh brother, seven seals, waiting for him to come. Notice, we get these symbols now. Well, it's just nine o'clock. We got uh, three hours or more to go. We got, uh, let's uh, just, uh, Satan keeps telling me that people is getting tired. So I guess they are, but let's take it anyhow. Seven horns was seven churches, see? There are seven church ages because that was the Lamb's protection. What he protected his rights with on earth was a God-sent group of people that protected, see, the horn on the Lamb. Seven eyes are the seven messengers of the seven church ages, seven eyes, seven seers. Would you like to write it down for some scripture? Let's just uh, turn to it. What do you say? We've got that much time. Conviction says amen. All right, let's go to Zechariah, the book of Zechariah, just a little bit. We'll read some of this. I don't want to keep you too long on these things, and I, but yet I don't want you to miss it. What's any more important than this? Yeah, what's more? A brother says, Brother Branham. What? You don't uh, measure that. Nothing more important than eternal life to a person. And we must get this now and be sure that we get it. All right? All right, sir. And now we want to read Zechariah, the third chapter. I think that's right now, in Zechariah 3, we're just going to get the symbols here. If I've got my scriptures wrote down, I was just shouting all over the places this afternoon when I hit this. So I just don't know whether it got right or not. I hope I have Zechariah 3, and let's, uh, I got 89 here. It must be 8 to 9. All right, all right. I know it can't be 89. Zechariah 3, 8 and 9. Here now, O Joshua the high priest, and thy fellows that sit with thee, for they are men wondered at, for behold, I will come, I will bring forth my servant the branch Christ, for behold, the stone that I will lay before Joshua, upon stone, one stone, shall be seven eyes. Seven eyes, behold, I will engrave the graving thereon, saith the Lord of hosts, I will remove the iniquity of the land in one day. Now let's turn over to Zechariah 4.10, listen, who hath despised the day of small things, God in simplicity, see? For they shall rejoice and see the plummet in the hands of the rebel with those seven. These are the seven of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth, the seven eyes. Eyes mean seeing, seeing means prophets, seers. This lamb had seven horns, and on each horn had an eye, seven eyes. What is it? Church, Christ and his bride, seven church ages, out of there were seven prophets that went forth, seven seers, eyes. So the last one must be a seer, all right? Notice, he is not an animal. He took the blood out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Who was it? The owner, the original owner, that had the book of redemption in his right hand. And no angel, no angelic being, nothing else could take the place. And this bloody lamb walked out and took the book of his hand. Who you? What was it, brother? This is the most sublime thing in the scripture, an act that 
not an angel, not nothing could do it. And the Lamb came and took it from the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. What is it now? It belongs to the Lamb. Amen. God's law is required. He is the one that holds it. God's law required a kinsman redeemer. And the Lamb came out holding it. I am the kinsman. I am the redeemer. I have made intercession for them. And now I've come to claim the rights for them. Amen. There is the only one I've come to claim the rights in that they have a right to everything that lost in the fall. And I've paid the price. Oh, brother, whew. Don't that make you feel religious inside, not by good works, which you have done, but by his mercy? Oh, wait a minute. And them elders and everything else begin to throw off crowns, and dignitaries begin to get on the ground, see? No one, no one could do it. And he walks right up to the right hand of God, and he took the book out of his hand and claimed his rights. I have died for them. I am their kinsman redeemer. I am the mediator. My blood has was shed. I am become man. And I do this in order to get that church back again, the one I foresaw before the foundation of the world. I have purposed it, I have spoke it, it would be there, and nobody was able to take it. But I went down and died myself. I am the kinsman, I become kinsfolk, and he takes the book. Amen. Oh, who is waiting there for me tonight? Who is that one church that's waiting there? What else could wait there for you? That kinsman redeemer. Oh my, what a sublime statement or act. Now, he has the title deed to redemption. He has it in his hand. Mediation is done now. He has it in his hand. Remember, it's been in his hand of God all the time. But now it's in the hand of the Lamb. Now what? The title deed of redemption of all creation is in his hand. And he come to claim it back too for the human race. Not claim it back to angels. He claimed it back to the human, which it was given for to make sons and daughters of God again. Bring them back to the Garden of Eden, everything they lost, the whole creation, the trees, the animal life, everything else, oh my. Don't that make you feel good for you? I thought I was tired, but I'm not now. See, sometimes I think I get too old to preach, and then I go to sing something like that, and I think I'm a young man again. Yes, uh -huh, uh -huh. it doesn't, it does something to you, see? For I know this, that there is someone there waiting for me. There is someone paid the price that I couldn't pay. That's right. He did it for me, Charlie. He did it for you. He did it for the whole human race. And now he comes for us to claim his redemptive rights. Claim it for who? Not for himself, for us. He is one of us. He is our king, folks. Oh, my, he is my brother. He is my savior. He is my God. He is my kinsman redeemer. He is all. For... What was I without him? Or what could I be without him? So, see, he is my all. And he's standing there as our king, folks. And now he's been interceding for us up till this time. And now he comes forth and takes the book of redemption to claim his rights of what he did for us. They died. Jesus said, He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth on me shall never die. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has everlasting life, and I'll raise him up at the last day. No matter he falls asleep in the first watch, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, seventh, wherever he falls asleep, what will happen? The trumpet of God shall sound, the last trump will blast forth. The same time that the last angel is giving his message, and the last seal is opened, that last trumpet will sound, and the Redeemer comes forth to take his redeemed possessions, his church blood washed now. Oh, the whole creation lays in his hand now, on which the whole plan of redemption is sealed by seven mysterious seals in this book that he took. Now watch, and he alone can reveal it to whomsoever he will. He's got it in his hand, see, now he promised it would be at that time now, for it is sealed by the seven seals of mystery, the book of redemption. Now watch, as now, look, friends, I told you, going to let you out at 30, but I've thrown over three or four pages here to get to this. So I want, I'm um, already after nine, so that uh, you can come back tomorrow. But now, in this sevenfold book of seals of redemption, that the Lamb took within himself was the only one could do it. And he took it from the right hand of him that sat upon the throne, now to claim his redemptive, to claim his rights, to claim for me and you, what he redeemed us from, to see back to everything that Adam lost in the Garden of Eden. 
he has redeemed us back to that. Now, with the lamb, with the book in his hands, we are ready to ask his grace and mercy upon us to open the seventh seal book to let us and let us look a past a curtain of time just a little bit. Oh my, notice when he took the book, the title did, sealed, just get that in your mind now and broke the seals of the mystery to reveal them, to bring them to his, see all of his redeemed subjects. Now, when we hit this in the seals, we are going to go back there and see them souls under the altar, crying, Lord, how long, how long? And here is he as a mediator on the altar, just a little longer until there has to suffer like you. But now he comes from here at this last seal. He's no more mediator, he's king now. And what does he do? If he's a king, he has to have subjects. His subject is them that he has redeemed, and they cannot come before him until he takes the right of redemption. And now he walks forth from a mediator where death put us in the grave. He comes forth with his rights. Amen. And even those who are alive and remain till the coming shall not hinder them which are asleep. For the trumpet of God shall sound and at that last trump, when the last seal is broke, when the seventh angel is given his message, the last trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet him in the air. He, he claims, he has come forth now to claim his possession. Watch, look at this. My broke the seals, revealed the mysteries, revealed them where? To the last church. The only one that's living, the rest of them is sleeping. He said, if he comes in the first watch, second watch, third watch, on down to the seventh watch, in the seventh watch, they went out a command or a call, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. And when they did, the sleeping virgin, the nominal churches, said, Oh, you believe I'd like to have that Holy Ghost. Have you noticed the Presbyterians and the Episcopalians? Did you hear the, my message in Phoenix to their men who stand there in the voice of their saying, Well, what's the matter with this author? Saying, Holy Father, so and so. When the Bible said, Call no man father, like that. See, they are sleeping with them. That's the reason. But when they come forth and say, yeah, we believe. A man, a woman just called up another woman, said, you know, I'm an Episcopalian. Said, I spoke in tongues the other day. I believe I received the Holy Ghost. But don't tell nobody. I doubt that very much. You might have spoke with tongues, but you set a man on fire. How is he going to set still? That's right. See, see. Can't do it. Could you imagine Peter and James and John and them in the upper room saying, Oh, we got the Holy Ghost now, but maybe we better just keep still. Brother, through windows, doors and everything, they went out into the street acting like a bunch of drunks. That's a real Holy Ghost. But you see, that sleeping virgin ain't receiving nothing anyhow. Aha, uh -huh, that's correct. And remember, while they went to try to buy oil, remember the scripture did, doesn't say they got it. But while they were out there trying to buy it, there come a sound. What happened? All those virgins that slept rose and trimmed their lambs and went into the supper. Is that right? And the rest of was left for the tribulation period, right? Weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. That's the church, not the bride, the church. The bride went in. There is a whole difference between the church and the bride. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Went into the wedding supper. Oh, notice, boy. The seals was broke. Why? In the last church age to reveal this truth. Why the lamb broke the seals and revealed them to his church in order to collect his subjects for his kingdom, his bride. See, oh my, he wants to bring his subjects to follow him. What is it? Out of the dust of the earth, out of the bottom of the sea, out of the pits, out of everywhere and every place, and out of the regions of the dark, out of paradise, wherever they may be, he'll call and they'll answer. Amen. Amen. He'll call and they'll answer. He come to get his subjects. He revealed his secrets and they saw it. And time is no more at that time. Time has run out. It's finished. All right. He leaves the throne to be an intercessor as a slain lamb, to be a lion, king, to bring the world to judgment. 
who has rejected his mystery? He's not a mediator. Remember the Old Testament teaching now, as we hurry, when the blood was went off the mercy seat, what was it? Judgment seat. And when the lamb slain walked forward from eternity out of Father's throne and took his right, it was a judgment seat. Then he became not a lamb, but a lion king, and he caused for his queen to come stand by his side. Know ye not the saints shall judge the earth, Daniel said, the judgment was set, and the books were opened, and ten thousands times ten thousands of thousands ministered to him, king and queen. And then another book was opened, which was the book of life, that for the church and the queen and the king stood there, as a cowboy's meditation, mediation said, last night as I laid on the prairie, I gazed to the stars in the skies, and I wondered if I, ever a cowboy, could drift that sweet by and by, there is a road to that bright, happy region, but it's dim, narrow trail, so they say, but the broad one that leads to perdition, it's posted and blazed all the way. They speak of another great owner, he's speaking in the terms of his cattle life. You, was ever in a roundup, you could see it plain. They speak of another great owner, and he is never overstocked, so they say. He's always make room for a sinner. That will drift on that straight narrow way. They say he will never come, he will never forsake you. And he knows every action and look. For safety, we'd get branded. Have our name on his great tally book. For they say there will be a great roundup when cowboys like doggies will stand to be marked by the riders of judgment. Them, prophets and seers, that's posted and knows every brand. If you was ever in a roundup, see the boss stand out there and the riders and the milling in that herd of cattle, he'll see his own brand go by and he'll motion to the boss and the boss will see to it and give him the nod. His pony runs right in around around this milling, cropping bunch of horns like that and cut his own cows out, see. They say there will be a great roundup and cowboys like doggies will stand. That will be marked by the riders of judgment that's posted and knows every brand see. So he said, I guess I will be a stray earling. Just a man that's condemned to die and branded he. They make soup out of him, see. That will be cut in the bunch with the rustics. When the boss of those riders come by, see who it is, the boss of the riders. That's the lamb to the seven messengers who is posted and knows every brand, see, hum. Notice, he come, leaves the throne as an intercessor, as a slain lamb, to become a lion, a king, to bring the whole world into judgment. Thus rejected our kinsman redeemer, then he is king over all. Why? He's got the title of redemption. It's all lays within his hand. I'm glad I know him, see. Then claims his inheritance. Thus the church, the bride, he claims it. What does he do then? He disposes of his contestant, Satan. He throws him in the lake of fire. With all of those who have inspired by Satan to reject his word of redemption, he is king now. Mercy is still on the throne. Don't you reject his offer, see? The writer knows just who you are. And now his contestant, who has given him trouble for 2,000 years, claiming I can do with them what I want to, I still have them, they are mine. I, they forfeit the title back there. But they, he is a kinsman redeemer. He said he is back here making intercessions now. But someday he'll say, I'll put them in the grave, but he holds the church, I'll bring you out, see? But first I've got to be an intercessor. Now he comes forth, steps out from eternity back yonder, up of the throne of the Father, where he sat as an intercessor. Now he comes to be king, oh, to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Judgment is set. Oh, brother, our kinsman redeemer holds it all. That's right, yes, sir. What does he do? He calls the contestant's hand, Satan. They are mine now. I have raised them up from the grave. And he takes all the liars and the perverters of the word and all like that with Satan and destroys them in the lake of fire. She is all over now. Throws them in a lake of fire. Oh, my. You know what? I want to say something here before we close and we'll hurry. Now, notice we are down to the seventh verse. From the 8th verse to the 14th, I want you to notice what takes place. All that was in heaven and all that was in earth, just listen to this. Let me just read it out. 
I believe it would be better if I just read it out of the book with the seventh verse seen and watch the sixth verse. And I behold, beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven heads or seven horns, I mean, and seven eyes, we just explained it, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth to all the earth. See, seven church ages, the seven messengers that kept that fire burning. See, all right. And he came, the lamb, and he took the book out of his right hand of him that sat upon the throne, sat upon the throne. Now watch. And when he done that, what what takes place? We talk about a jubilee. Now this is exactly the breaking of them seals takes place. We'll get in the half an hour of silence. Just after this, watch this, and we'll start in, we'll finish this up next Sunday night, right here. And listen close now. Are you ready? Say amen. Congregation says amen. Listen close. What took place when he had did this? When all creation was groaning, no one knew what to do, and John was weeping. Here come the lamb, walked over, and this book was in the hands of the original owner, because man had fell and lost it, and no man was able to take it anymore to redeem the earth. No priest Pope, nothing, as I said, but the lamb come up, no Mary, no saint, this or saint that, the lamb come up, bloody, slain, and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne, and when they seen there was a redeemer, and all the souls under the altar, when the angels, when the elders, when the everything seen it, when this is done, it yet lays in the future, tonight he is a mediator, but he is coming to this watch. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints, that's those that's under the altar that have been prayed for long ago. See, they had prayed for redemption, prayed for the resurrection. And here, these elders are pouring out their prayers before because we are now we have got a representative we've got a kinsman in heaven that come forth to make his claims and they sang a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed us back to our god watch by thy blood out of every kindred tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth they wanted to come back and here they are going back to be kings and priests. Glory to God, I feel good enough to speak in tongues. Look, watch, yes, it seems like I ain't got enough language. I could praise him with it. I need one that I don't even know. Beho notice, and I beheld, listen to this, and I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels. Listen, what a jubilee going on. When they seen that lamb come and take that book of redemption, the soul screamed out, We'll get it, all, everything, the elders fell down, they poured out the prayers of the saints, what? There was represented a kinsman for us, they fell upon their faces, and they sang a song and said, Thou art worthy, for you were slain, what? What, look at all these angels. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels around about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand of thousands few, notice, saying with a loud voice, Why is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings? What a jubilee going on in heaven when that Lamb leaves, leaves the intercessory box to come here to possess his claims. You know that got next to John. He must have see, saw his name wrote there. When them seals broke, he must have got real happy. Listen what he said. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth, and underneath the earth, such as within the sea, and all that in them is in them, heard me saying, Blessings, honor, glory, power be to him that sits upon the throne, and to the Lamb forever. Amen, and amen, and amen. Oh, and the four beasts said, Amen, and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that lives forever and ever. Talk about a jubilee, talk about a time when that Lamb walks forth, see the book, is even sealed in heaven. The, mis the mysteries are. Say, is this my name there? I don't know. I hope it is. But if it is, it was put on the book before the foundation of the world. But the first thing that represented that redemption, come the lamb that had been slain from the foundation of the world, 
and he took the book. Glory, he opened the book and tore up the seals and sent it down to the earth to his seventh angel to reveal it to his people. There you are, oh my, what happened to the screams, the shouts, the hallelujahs, the anointed, the power, the glory, the manifestation. And old John, who had been standing there, our brother crying, why he said everything in heaven, everything in the earth, and everything in the sea, heard me holler, amen, amen, blessings, honor, and might, and power to, to be to him that lives forever and ever. Talk about a happy time where them seals broke. John must have, have looked in and seen the past that of time and said, there is John. Oh, he was so happy till he said everything in heaven must have really cried out. Didn't he? Everything in heaven, everything in the earth, everything beneath the earth, every creature, everything else heard me saying, Amen, blessings and glory and wisdom and power and might and riches belongs to him. Amen. Why? When the revelation come that the Lamb, the Redeemer, our kinsman, had come back from the throne of meditorial and had walked out here to take his possession, soon the Lamb will take his bride to the ever side. All the hosts of heaven will assemble to be. Oh, it will be a glorious sight, all the saints in spotless white, and with Jesus we shall live eternally. Oh, come and dine, the master calleth on the word, come and dine. Oh, I get without words, see, come and dine, come and dine. You can feast at Jesus' table all the time now, but when he leaves, there is no hope. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. He that said that, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Oh, my, he that promised these things in the last days, he that said these things, he that's now in the time of the revelation of these things being made known, come and dine. Oh, don't miss it, my brother. Now let us bow our heads just a minute tomorrow night. By the grace of God, we'll try to break the first seal. If God will break it for us and let us see what this revelation has been hid from, from the foundation of the world. Before we do that, sinner friend or lukewarm church member, do you know just, do you just have a membership in a church or do you not have a membership? And if you have only a membership, you would be pretty near as well off without it. You need a bath. You must come to the blood. You must come to the something that just spots the sin away till there is no more remembrance of it. If you haven't made preparation yet to meet the Lamb in the air and by the power invested in me, by my commission given, by Almighty God, administered to me by an angel of the pillar of light, I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ, don't try to meet him with only a membership of a lodge of a church of this earth. Come while the mediator, as far as I know, is still on the throne, making intercessions, because there will come a day when you'll want to come, and there will be no mediator. And if we see the hour we are living in the seventh church, and the mysteries of God become what they have, with the vindicated spirit of God showing everything that he promised in the last days, how much more time is left seeing a friend come? Lord Jesus, the hours are growing late. It may be even later than we are thinking. But we are happy to see this hour approaching. It is the most glorious hour that the world has ever known for the believer. But for the rejecter, the most baddest time that could ever be. There couldn't find words in the alphabet, letters to make known what could express the trouble and the sorrow that lays ahead. And neither is there any words could be formed from our alphabet to express blessing that lays ahead for the believer. Father, there may be some tonight here without hope and they are intelligent human beings and now if the blood still lays on the mercy seat, let the lamb walk out from the throne to their heart tonight and reveal to them that they are lost and with bloody hands say come while it is time to come i commit the message lord with my prayer to your hands do whatever you will father in jesus name with our heads bowed if you have not met this request and this requirement if you have only trusted in your church there was nothing that could redeem if you trusted in the intercession of some saint you are still lost if you have trusted in the works of your hands something that you have done good works you are lost if you have trusted within the prayer of your mother or the righteousness of your mother your father if you have trusted in that, you are lost. If you have trusted upon some sensation, some strange feeling, some emotion or speaking in tongues or dancing, if that's all you have trusted in and don't know the Lamb, personally don't know him, then I charge you before God, make that thing right now with God. Down in your heart, pray and just be simple because God hides in simplicity. You remember the Bible said, as many as believed was added. 
And Lord, we pray for you a trust that will make you are that one eternal decision, Lord, I'll say yes, and the decision is a stone. But what good is a stone without a stone mason that can cut it to shape the building, to fit the building? Then let the Holy Spirit cut you from what you are to what you should be. If you are a statue church member, if you are a sinner, whatever you are, if you are without Christ, without the Holy Spirit, God grant to you peace tonight. Now, Lord, as sinly as I know how to come, and as scripturally as I know how to come, I come now with these I have committed to you, with the word I'm trusting, Lord, that the word has found its place in the heart of people tonight. If there be such here that does not know or does not have that assurance of the Holy Spirit presence, abiding in their life, that tempers or indifferences or selfishness or something has cut this great thing from them and has kept them from it, or some creed or some sensation has kept them from the sweetness of the fellowship of God, that it will now be turned loose, and that the lamb, that bloodly holy kinsman that come walking forth from the throne, down through the mystic lights of the corridors of God's throne, walked out to claim his inheritance. God grant tonight that they will receive him. May each decision be made solemnly, and may they surrender themselves to him alone, who ha can cut them, and ship them into sons and daughters of God. Now, in solemn prayer, I'm doing this is the way I feel like to do it. In solemn, before God, as he has proved himself to you, and you are, wasn't a Christian, or you wasn't what we call, not a denominational joiner, but a, I mean a born-again Christian. But you have solemnly believed the message is true, and you solemnly believe that you can be saved by the grace of God, and you believe that he is speaking to your heart now and you want to accept him are you ready for his word to cut you from what you are and make you what you should be will you witness the same by standing to your feet if that person is here and wants to make the all sufficient stand to your feet heavenly father i know not no more what to do but to quote your word here men standing on their feet that feels that they haven't been where they should be ready for this rupture for it may take place before the first seal may be opened to us. And Father, I pray that for them, I as your servant offer this prayer and to the great intercessor Christ, as they pray, I offer my prayer with them upon the ivory throne of God, where the bloody sacrifice is setting there tonight, and most any time might step from the throne to come forth to claim his possession, then there is no more mercy left. If judgment grant, Lord, that the peop these people on their feet that standing in their hearts, making them confession and willing to let the Spirit of God mold them and cut them and shape them into living stones into the house of the Lord God. Grant it, Father, I commit them to you now. And you said, He that will confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father and the holy angels. And now you are sitting there in the presence of all tonight and they are standing confessing you. And Lord, if that is from the bottom of their heart, just as sure as God's word is right, you are now making intercessions for them and accepting them in the grace and mercy realms of the cleansing blood of the sacrificial lamb, and they shall be yours in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But you, that will seize these people standing on their feet, this young man right in here, in there, and them are standing up, you who felt all that sin and condemnation is gone, I want you just raise up some of you close to them shake their hand and say brother i'm praying for you sister i'm praying for you just shake their hand and say god bless you and now the rest belongs to the hand of the almighty say i will pray and i will do all all that i can to help you into the kingdom of god oh calling today oh jesus is calling he's finally calling today do you love him isn't he wonderful oh what would we do without this Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. What shall man live? Oh, feed me, Lord, upon the word, forsaking not to assemble yourselves together as the man of unbelievers, and that much more as you see the day approaching. God willing, tomorrow night, by the grace of God, I'll try with all that in me to ask him to intercede, that the mysteries of these seals, as they break forth, will proclaim the word of God to the people. Until I meet you, God be with you. 
and now I turn the service to honorable brother, brother Neville, the pastor. How many loves brother Neville? Congregation says amen. Now we all do. Come forward, brother Neville. Brother Neville, God bless you.